ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Lunch Money. I'm your host, Gina Savage. I'm a talent booker and the owner of Sunshine State Comedy in Florida. I'm joined with co-host, host of our own show as well, Christy Unleashed, and stand-up comic and my friend, Christy Miller. Here we are. Here it is, Monday. Yeah. Too, too hyper? Too much? Too soon? It's, it's always too soon. Apparently, it's always too soon. Apparently, happy Monday. It's always too soon. There is any joke. I've heard so many jokes about, you know, the Olympics and blah, 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 and mental health. It's too soon. It's too soon. Hashtag can't joke. too soon. You left me standing alone. Oh, that's blue. Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it, it works. I mean, uh, you could definitely parody it. So uh, uh, we're your new noon, and um, there's so much going on. I, I don't even know where to begin. So I'll just start by saying this. Everyone, everyone is under fire. Everyone. Everyone. Everybody's under fire. Everyone's yep. under fire. Everybody, get, you're on the shooting range, so you know what? If you're going to go down, you might as well just go down. Just fucking go down with the shit. Be the violinist on the Titanic keep fucking playing because the ship is sinking and you're going down bitch that here's what i realized you know you know why everybody's under fire everybody's under fire because back in the day everybody didn't have a voice now with twitter everybody can weigh in on anything yeah. so back in the day if you didn't like your toothpaste you wrote to the company and you were like this toothpaste sucks now, every buddy and their brother, once you put a thing out about toothpaste, could go, yeah, toothpaste sucks. This is sucky, suck, suck, suck central, right? Everybody and their brother can weigh in. You wrote a letter to the company, end of story. Why do we need to know 900 other views about it? I don't, it's, 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 it's really, uh, uh, it's an issue. It is. <laughs> what happened to, if you don't like something, just turn the channel. Don't what buy it. To it. Don't buy. Don't spend money. Don't don't look at it. Don't you know? Go there. Don't buy that book. Don't go to that club. Don't don't watch that TV. Don't just fucking be be a grown up. Be a okay. fucking grown up and take responsibility and make an adult choice by going. I don't want to watch it, so watch. I'm not gonna watch it. It's like so stupid. Yeah, you know, stop telling me what I need to like and what I don't need to like, okay? Despite a lot of things, my mom and dad did the best they could with me and I have a discerning eye about a few things, right? So if I don't right. like something, I don't watch it. But don't tell me what's funny and what's not funny because I'm Jewish and I've heard a lot of really, you know, let's say I'll be, let's say they're off color, you know, jokes about Nazis or what have you. Now, I'm a Jewish person. You would think I could be offended, right? I could be offended. I know, I know survivors, believe it or not, a survivor of the Holocaust, at least one survivor of the Holocaust. I don't think I'd make jokes in front of a survivor of the Holocaust, but don't tell me I can't laugh at stupid shit because it's just, take it in the spirit. Nobody, you know what I mean? Nobody is Listen, saying- Listen, comedy is <laughs> cathartic, all right? Comedy is completely cathartic. And when something crazy and completely horrifying happens, how I personally deal with it is I make jokes about it because that's how I process it in my fucking Neanderthal knuckle dragging brain, 18%. And fucking, I can't. <laughs> hey, that's right. you did, you did, you did that. Ancestry, 20, right? I, 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 I did a, I did 123 in me. <laughs> and oh, that's your my sex life. life. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're, you're 18 percent Neanderthal. Is that what yeah. you? <laughs> I am the Geico cave woman. Good night. <laughs> Knuckle oh my God. It feels right, well, like you. No, but my say is uh, that's yeah. how my brain processes. It's too much and too heavy. So I have to joke and make jokes or I laugh like a five-year-old with the church giggles because that's how I process it. That's right. And, and, and be damned to take away your right to laugh at horrible shit. That's yeah. the way I say it. Like, don't like it, don't watch it. So let's, there's a couple, I want to kind of do it succinctly. So let me, I'm going to just set it up and then we'll talk about it in order because it, 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 it you know, just works better this way. Okay, so I'm a I'm a uh, Neanderthal. I need guidance. 
Okay, so so I have the Schumers on, the, the Schumer Chuck Schumers. Schumers. And so uh it's gonna be point it's gonna be poignant. Uh not really. Um all right, so a uh, couple things. Yeah. Ben St- Ben Stiller was under fire. I, I don't know if it's under fire is the right terminology here, but he's uh, because he's doing a film and okay. um, they're they're saying you know, they're, they, the people, are saying nepotism because he's using uh, Steven Spielberg's daughter is directing this project. So, and, and also involved in the project is um, Stephen King's son, um, and Sean Penn's son is in it. And uh, nepotism. Uh, okay, that's one thing. We'll, we'll talk about that. The other thing um, is Michael Shea was under fire because of comments made about uh, you know the Olympics and Simone Biles. Uh, you know, Biles. And um, so there's that. And then um, and then Adam Carolla, who weighed in with uh, his views on, you know, how comedy used to be a countercultural counterculture thing. And now it's a popularity contest. Now, if we go with Adam Carolla. This is not a popularity contest now with these guys. Right. Like they said some stuff. They're doing some stuff and they're under fire. Thoughts. Thoughts. Uh, Adam Carolla hasn't been relevant since podcasts were invented. <laughs> <laughs> when the man show was canceled so was he sweetie yeah adam carolla was like one of the first big podcasts like comics to do a podcast his podcast was the first one to have like a big following and create the whole momentum for other comics to do podcasts the same way ashton kutcher was the first dickhead to get a million followers on twitter it's the same thing um at one point, I used to love Adam Kroll. I thought he was cool. I had respect for him because he was doing his thing. But like most people in this fucked up industry, they, they, I, I always call it that the, the, they, you know, the, the comfortable 45, like they got their 40, like the comics that have their 45 minute set and they stick to that 45 minute set and they don't write any more jokes because that 45 minute set works. And they just stick to that. And then 20 years goes by and they're still doing the same 45 minutes. And they wonder why the whole industry passed them by and left them behind. Adam Carolla is the 45 minute set of podcasts. He started it. He didn't really like change or progress or do anything cool or relevant. And he just kind of faded off. And now it's always these guys that made it off into the distance because the game left them behind that they were once running and had control of. Now they're going to blame everybody else except for themselves and all this bullshit, why they don't have a lot of followers or why their careers, but in the shitter because they haven't, they want to blame everybody except for take responsibility and accountability. That's well, just we, my yeah. two and a half cents. I hear your your point on that. I'm just gonna say, like, isn't he? He's like kind of like a Fox News staple, right? Isn't he? He's always on shows with Fox. I don't. I don't even. When anybody falls out of the system, they go to Fox News because (laughs) Fox News caters to the. (laughs) Okay. So. Okay. So. uh, All right. So. I mean, you're right. Okay. I don't know where I'm going with this. All right, here's I'm going to go back to Ben Stiller. Okay, who I who I who I love. I I'm a big fan of uh, love, you know. First of all, if there's nepotism, I don't really care. I I I got to say on the nepotism level here, I don't I don't care. You know, people hire their sons and daughters to work in their shops. You know, Take you know, over the it, family it, business. Right. You know, it, it's like who. Yeah, they learn from the best. Why shouldn't they be doing, you know, why shouldn't their, you know, a parent put their kid in a movie? Okay. I mean, yes. Yes, I understand diverse, diversity and, and, and uh, opportunity. But I'm also for, you know, if your kid or, or your cousin or your uncle has the chops, why deny them? Because you have a problem with it? I'm like, I just, it's like, you, what? Donald Trump shouldn't have those kids in there? Yeah, he shouldn't have, but he did. And yeah. nobody's here. Where, Nobody. Where you boo-hoo, where you boo-hoo, where you, yeah. Where you boohoo's there? Yeah. You know. Well, my, I mean, well, where are you boohoo's? Well, at least with Ben Stiller, <laughs> I get it. He's funny. He's creative. He's a nice guy. I like him. He's great. His I like parents all of them. Are phenomenal. Yeah. Um. You know, Amy Stiller's kind of like the the pe- the Don Swayze of the Stiller family. Like she looks like them, but doesn't quite have the job. <laughs> I, I, I love her. I, yeah, I love, <laughs> she's I so love ex- her to death. Yeah, but she's yeah. so, but, but it's like, 
it, but, you know, I understand, like, a, a no discredit to her. No disrespect to her. So you know there's a bunch of disrespect right about there's now. There's no disrespect, no disrespect. We, we never disrespect. No, Everything's in fun here. Yeah, it's yeah. all in fun. But the funny thing is, it's like, it's Ben Stiller who actually created his own identity away from his parents. Nobody goes, oh, look, it's Ann Mara and Fred, Fred Stiller's kid. You know, uh, or Jerry Stiller, Fred Stiller. Hi, comic. He had a kid that's older than him. Hi, thank you. <laughs> uh, but they don't, they don't think Jerry Stiller and Ann Mara's kid. They go, oh, look, that's Ann Mara's boy. That's the that's the Stiller boy from down. Stiller is the Stiller boy. You know, boy. You know? <laughs> that's Stiller boy. <laughs> they don't say that. like people don't think of yeah. him. They think of him as Ben Stiller. Now, yeah, and, I don't think it right. You know what I mean? Like it's like. People look at like Don Swayze or Frank Stallone. They think, yeah, that's the Stallone brother. That's the Swayze brother. They didn't right. really have the, the, the talent that Ben had that his parents, you know, birthed into him. Thank God. Thank God okay. for nepotism because we got Ben Stiller. Well, exactly. But get, get, getting to the initial point was like everybody weighing in, right? Yeah. This wouldn't have even been a thing had someone not, you know, tweeted or made some comment somewhere. And then like, you know, the other people that aren't doing anything with their lives chimed in. Oh yeah, yeah you're right. There's no, my shot at being in that movie, no, whether was, or not I fit the part. Blah, no, here's, blah, blah. Here, here's my impression of them <laughs> with the Stillers. This is, this is, we're gonna use a prop now. It's called improv. Oh God. And this is a telescope. <laughs> where is something wrong? Ah! Yeah, it's a stiller it matches the name like they just discovered uh, yeah, ben yeah. Stiller as jerry stiller's kid like you just figured that out you piece of shit just do then do your own thing do create your own, thing. own. Stop. mind your fucking business i mean the world is uh is it opening up maybe maybe not yeah. uh but um we are so but i know we got a mask you got if you don't if you're not if you assholes aren't going to vaccinate put on a fucking mask i have to wear a mask because assholes won't vaccinate that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, now, speaking of vaccination, so Sean Penn's son is in this. Uh, in this, it's a short film, uh, and I don't mind uh, promoting it because I don't have a problem with it. I love Sean uh, Penn, by the way, and I'm a big fan. And a lot of people, I'm like probably the number one fan of the movie Tropic Thunder. I love that movie. Oh, so how much. great is that movie? It's so oh. fucking funny. Oh, unbelievable. That I mean, funny. like I and I and I don't want to pay for it on like, you know, HBO Max or wherever it's playing. I just want it like I just love that movie. So I wish I they have, would do a sequel the, to that. I have I have the DVD. Oh good. Yeah. That's what a loser I am. Oh let's okay. And uh and then I would probably say, oh could I have it? And you would probably say of course and then I would say thank yeah. you because uh -huh. you're a good person. We're going to talk about good people at the end of the, we at will. The end of this. But now let's uh, talk about get, the bad people. <laughs> all right. Well, so Sean Penn, his son is in this, in this movie, which is, is, is a short film called the right, the right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a conspiracy film, but Sean himself is um, uh, doing a film. He, and he's refusing to go on to the set of a Watergate drama be, until everybody's vaxxed. So, oh, yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of people don't like Sean Penn. You know that, right? Uh, well, Sharon Stone's having the same problem. She's got the part of a lifetime, but they told her she goes to work. Not all the people are going to be vaccinated. And she threw a fit. She's like, they have to be. I'm not going to risk spreading it or getting disease or killing somebody. She goes, you have to be vaccinated. So now she's scared she's going to lose the part in her film because she wants everybody to be vaccinated. And it's, it's like, it's, it's so fucked up right now. Like we are in such a fucked position. This is this country's civil war. Yeah. The, yeah. We're using the vaccine as yeah. our weapon. It's uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Michael Che. Uh, first of all, I love Che. You know, God, people, these are jokes. I mean, they're jokes. And everybody went, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm going to say I didn't see the joke. Me I'm neither. Say, I, I, I didn't, I didn't see I, it. But, but you know what? It's still a joke. It's still a joke. Look at the source. If this mm -hmm. was like somebody other than Che, like you could be like, hey, Michael, I didn't appreciate the joke. Well, but it's still a joke, right? Like, you know, I wouldn't look, people are going to make fun of me one day, right? Uh, yeah. You know, eight, eight ball in the corner pocket or whatever you do. <laughs> I could be like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, like I could be really upset about certain things. But what is the point of that? Like, grow a pair, everybody. What happened? And I'm not saying that. 
uh, Simone, first of all, mental health. Boy, I wish I would have taken a mental health break. I wish I would have taken, I didn't see that I needed a mental health break. So to, to credit her for that, absolutely. When you're looking at the bodies of these athletes, you know what I'm saying? And at her age, to be that mature, to be able to say and have the strength and confidence at such a young age to go, I'm not performing at my peak. I'm going to flop, hurt myself or lose it. I need to step back because I'm only going to hurt the team. And right. And to be that mature at that age. Right. Simone, I, you work, bitch. You are the queen, honey. That being said, everything in comedy is fair game, right? You can yes. say, oh, woo -hoo -hoo, she didn't want to, woo -hoo -hoo, you know, and it shouldn't be like, you really mean it because they're jokes. They're yeah. jokes. It's called they're jokes. Jokes. And that's how we process. No one in the world would want the girl to perform under those circumstances. What, I mean, what, get, what is wrong with everybody that they believe? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, what if they, what if she did perform? She hurt herself in, for life. She hurt somebody on her team. She fucked one of her team members up. It, it, oh, and, and if she didn't get the gold because she got injured, you would have fucking slaughtered her. People just aren't happy being, just letting shit be. Everybody wants to be a miserable prick. Everybody wants to look for the fucking bad things because I like to stay miserable. Leave the little girl alone. She's a kid. She's fucking... Let me see your fat pasty ass do what this little girl can do. No I, doubt. I get out of the chair. I'm like, oh, you know, and this bitch is doing twisties. Hello. These twisties. Twisties. I like her. Twisties. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, and just uh, to to Adam Carolla's point, because I think he actually had one. And that is, is that there was a time, whether it was during his earlier Adam Carolla days, there was a time that we could say stuff and people were like, you know, how many, like the Joan Rivers years or, you know, the Sam Kinison years where you could go off on, uh, you know, uh, oh. Jerry Falwell and these types of, you can just say whatever. And people knew that you were joking. And now we have to be, and he's well, saying we used to have back bonus comics, yeah, I think. Well, well yeah. also, too, social media has destroyed any kind of artistic integrity that comedians have. And I'll tell you why. Because the fact is, back in the day with the Carlins, the Lenny Bruce's, the Kinnison's, the, you know, the, the so forth and so prior, all the Mooney, you know, all these greats, Dice, you know, being able to like talk about controversial shit. That's how we got through things. That's how people got through the war. And that's how people get through the trauma. Like that's how we got through 9-11. Like it was comedy that saved the day. And now with social media and everybody having a fucking little chatter chatterbox voice and everybody thinks they're more important than they really fucking are. Because trust me, people, none of y'all are important. None of us are important. <laughs> none I of us. Yeah, I ain't shit, okay? I ain't shit. I none know my place, but I'm here to have a good time and make fun and have a, tell a few jokes. And the fact is, everybody thinks they're more important than they are. So everybody's got to chime in and have an opinion. So it, it just fucking waters down all that shit and stifles it and it just smashes it into a little crumb, like a tiny little crumb. And it's like, you can't do that. You're, 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 because you're acting so crazy, like you can't joke about this. You shouldn't talk about this. That's offensive. And that triggers me and all that bullshit. Get over yourself. Who the fuck are you to be the fucking voice of who says what and where and how? Comedy is for the fucking thick skinned motherfuckers. We've been through hell. Why do you think we tell jokes? Because we're fucked up. All right. We are right. crazy fucking people. And this is our way to help you, the fucking idiot, talk and deal with whatever real life bullshit and or whatever you, trauma you, is going and on and, yeah. and, and talk about it, laugh and be able to absorb it in a lighthearted sense so we can function, deal with it and move on. Exactly. That's my normal Norma Ray. Norma Ray. <laughs> Norma Ray it out. Um, <laughs> so one last thing. So I watched, I, I saw two things. Aaron Berg, who had just recently done a set. I don't know if it was a rooftop or the stand or wherever he was, but he was doing 
Ehrenberg, which is to poke fun at everybody. And no. there wasn't a single person in that audience that was having what we like to say, a conniption fit about it. But if that was aired, you know, somewhere, so, oh, I can't believe he said this and he said that, somewhere the, the offended would be chiming in. But he's on stage, those people were laughing. And again, like what you said, if you don't like it, turn it off. Yeah, don't go, don't Nobody go cares about you and your 51 followers' uh, feelings. Yeah, I okay? don't give a fuck. And, and if you can't handle any kind of funny, or if you right. can't laugh at yourself, you don't deserve to be in a comedy club, first of all. If you're that arrogant and so full of yourself and so far up your own ass, don't go to a comedy club. Go fuck yourself. Why? Maybe you should jerk off, get a hook, or do some blow off a donkey's ass. Something. Just calm the fuck down and get over yourself. Believe that's, our- my, <laughs> that's my Thursday. Hey! Here's, like here's, our, food. Here, here's our next uh, not fan mail. Uh, Dear Gina and Christy, who the fuck cares what you fucking think about anything? Nobody. And that's okay. Cause we're not here to like enlighten you like that. Just saying stuff and trying to like work it out for ourselves a little bit and hopefully we're entertain. We're, we're just, just talking. talking. It's a conversation talking. at lunch. It's a lunchtime conversation. Is it um, <laughs> it, not really. Um, so lastly, and here's some good stuff, right? Because, um, because I was, you know, I'm always, here's the thing about me and maybe uh, when I do something for someone, I don't say, I don't call my friends. Guess what I did for so-and-so. Oh. Guess what I did for so-and-so. Hear me out. Oh. Robin Shaw, who, um, you know, who became sort of a Instagram famous, you know, because of, uh, her her resolutions pre COVID and then she was on the view and it exploded. So Robin, uh, who is a lovely person, and see she doesn't know I'm talking about her, right? She doesn't know, but like she likes to do good deeds, right? That's her thing. Robin, right? you hear this? I'm gonna put you on speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so she likes to do good deeds. So she had this thing where um, Sunday at three o'clock, right? This last Sunday. Uh, do a good deed, you know, and let's like put positivity out in the world. My feeling is that's great and inspire people to do that. But how about the people that do good deeds that have to tell you about their good deeds? Because I'm not going to tell you about my good deeds. I'm just going to do them because there's a little bit of humility. I think that's very important in life. You do something good. Just know that you did it. Yeah. Just that's all Know you, that you did. Well, if you do something just because you do something nice for someone and you don't have your cell phone ready and the angles aren't said like, already, I'm going to give you a dollar, homeless guy. And I want the whole world to see what a great fucking person I am because I'm giving this fucking jerk off a dollar. Woo! You know, I'm so great. Again, fuck you. Just give the guy a dollar and keep it moving. You know how much shit I do every day for people? I don't, I don't, oh, today on Facebook, I did a nice thing for somebody because I gave them gifts. So you have to like me. Fuck that. I don't want anybody to know I do nice shit. I want people to think I'm a mean fucking cunt. So they leave me the fuck alone. And then I do something nice for you. You have a heart attack and you die. That's how my life goes. Like, yeah. I, 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 I by the way, are you drinking out of your cunt mug? Oh, I, I no. almost lost mine as usual. There it is. It's gone. No, mine is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. And this is uh, my, my brother one. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's be honest. Being my sister is the only gift that you need. Yes. That was a gift. My brother is a gift. Yeah. Um, and you, I bet your brother uh, didn't go on social media and go, I got my sister a coffee mug that says she's yeah. the best gift I could give her. <laughs> No, he did not. He did not do it. So no. people, if you're listening uh, and watching, how about you do something nice because you want to do something nice, but you don't tell anybody about it because yeah. that's how I roll. I don't need to tell you what I do because my actions, right? It's my actions. What are, what are your actions? Are you putting people, like, let's just, I'm going to make it broad. If you produce a show, are you putting people on stage? Are you getting people to work? Are you putting revenue in another person's pocket? Are you are you contributing to the life stream? What are you contributing? How, That's the end of yeah, the day thing. Yeah. How yeah? How about pay it forward? Put the energy on the universe. But also, there's also mm-hmm. the schmuckos that do nice things for you because they're trying to manipulate you 
to do nice things for them. Yes. Like that's the creepy one that bothers me. And that's like, you do something just because you want people to treat you that way. So you do it, but it's not like, oh, I'm treating you nice because I just want to do something nice for you. And I think everybody should have something nice done for them. That's unconditional, but if you're doing it specifically also to make nice things happen to you. So that person almost like they owe you, like you got one up on them. Like now you owe me because I did a nice thing. Get the fuck out. Don't do shit right. for me. I got this. You know, well, I like so to do nice things for people because it makes me feel good. I don't post, I don't post shit on, on Facebook except for our clips. I don't fucking do anything personal. That's my personal life. You butt out. I'm a, as far as you guys know, I'm a bitter fucking floppy lip cunt. That's how I like it. <laughs> hey, all right. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Mm. Listen, we're out of time. Um, okay. But uh, I want to hear a little bit about what happened last week and what's going on this week. And then I'll do the same and then we'll bounce. Perfect. Well, uh, this past week, uh, as you remember, um, we did the show. I did the show with Angel Salazar. <laughs> that was hilarious. We, it was packed. I mean, they came out in droves for Angel. There were seven people in the audience. It was packed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then the next night we did the Sorry Not Sorry show that I'm co-producing with my friend Jose Vega. We did it that past Thursday with John Fugel saying, Irene Bremis, and uh, uh, Janice Massetti hosted. And we had a blast. And uh, what a great show. It was fa That show was packed, literally. So there was that's eight. great. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Are you serious about no, the angel no. show? <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. <laughs> Check it out. So Check uh, it out or not. Yeah. Or don't oh. come out. So uh, yeah, that was mm -hmm. fun. But this week, you know, I'm doing a pilot with uh, Jim Adrinos for All Media TV this Thursday. It's a comedy game show, I believe. I'm a judge on the show. So, you know, I'm going to tear everybody apart. So that'll be fun. It'll be Thursday night at, I think, at eight o'clock at Broadway Comedy Club. Anyway, so, but that, and uh, this Wednesday, as always, every Wednesday night at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Governor's Comedy Club Radio YouTube channel, you can watch the latest episode of Christy Unleashed. And this week's guest, because Mark Riccadonna is actually shooting a pilot as well. Hey, we're all killing pilots. Hey, what is this? <laughs> You know, where's TSA when you need them? So, uh, <laughs> so Christy and Lisa will be our special guest. Will be the very funny from I Miss in the Morning, uh, Emmy Award winning Rob Bartlett will be my co-host. Wow, nice, very yeah. good, awesome. Yeah. All right, great. Um, all right, so real quick, uh, I did shows last week along with Johnny Azari. Uh, who is who had been co-producing us uh, some of the shows sunshine state shows he's actually leaving florida um and you know i bounced between new york and florida but he's leaving um but we had great shows he uh he recorded live at our show in um west palm beach where we had a really nice crowd i'd say there were about 50 of us of course all unmasked and unvaccinated Welcome to Florida. Hey, we're, we're at 21,000 right. cases. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally. I'm totally joking. Um, no, I'm totally vaxxed. I'm vaxxed I and waxed. Yes. I said yes. it. Oh, oh. God. Who, oh, ha, oh, hack. Um, so, uh, so anyway, this week, um, we just have, uh, so it's Johnny's last show in Florida until he's back. I, I, I'm like, He'll be back in two weeks. I'm going to do the return of Johnny Azari show uh, when he comes back because it'll probably be hopefully quick. But um, it's been a pleasure working with him. I have to say that. But we'll be at the Dubliner um, this Wednesday in Boca Raton with a free show. Um, Marisa Brusolo, Lalo Rodriguez, Zach McGovern, Josh Rosen, um, Steve Lamb, and Johnny Azari will be at that show. It is free. It's in Boca. Come see me. Come hang out. Come hang out with the comics because we like to give. We give. What do you give, sweetie? Head? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> All right. That's our time. <laughs> I, just, I literally just spit. Okay. Mm. Mm. Well, that's our show, folks. Uh, we're going to mm -hmm. give you uh, a week to think about it. So we will see. This has been Lunch Money. <laughs>
I've been your host, Christy Miller. That's been Gina Savage. You can catch us every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the YouTube, on the wacky old YouTube. And you know what? You know that we are your new noon. So tune in and we'll see you motherfuckers next week. Bye.